Good. And I got so you good on the one second though. Bluetooth. Good evening, class. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> My name is Kenyatta Jackson, and I will be your moderator for this class session. <laughs> I would like to uh, remind everyone to please silence all cell phones and any other electrical devices at this present time. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Chicago Northside Zoom class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof to you the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operate throughout eternity until this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. Chicago Northside Zoom class was established in the year 2007. At this time, I would like to introduce to you the school officials. The Dean of the Northside Chicago branch is Dr. John Quait, and the president is Dr. Patrick Maturity. In this school, we use the true, correct, original names and titles of the Father, the Word of Son, and of the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by the word Lord. The true title of the word of son is Elohim, and it has been improperly substituted by the word God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua, and his name has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles, and they are not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. 
Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove to you neither the Hebrew language, nor the Greek language, nor the Latin language. If any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. And neither was there a letter J in our English language until some 14 to 1600 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source and substance, limits and bounds of everything. Now we have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. Now we have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being. That means having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood by divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by a divine pattern of the universe. It is, a called, it is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses the top of Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in the vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in this universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional aims and objectives of Chicago Northside Zoom class are as follows. First, is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and as he actually exists. Second, is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or the so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophies, modern, practical, and occult science. And fifth is to extricate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. And six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. And seven is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth 
through the dispensations of time. And eight is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man can and must be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is to speak the truth. This evening class will be dedicated in prayer by Dr. John Coates, the Dean, and we will have our scripture lesson, which is Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, where by Dr. Myra Coates. May we have our prayer, please. Uh, our hearts and minds and give reverence and praise to Yahshua Messiah who kept us thus far and we hope that he continues to keep us and open up our hearts and minds and give us a desire to study and learn of him and have faith and confidence in him and to worship only him with our whole heart and our whole mind. We give all honor to Yahshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll be reading Ezekiel, the 37th chapter from a King James Zondervan Bible with the true names and titles imposed. The hand of Yahweh was upon me, and he carried me out in the spirit of Yahweh and set me down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones, caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in an open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? I answered, O Yahweh Elohim, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus saith Yahweh Elohim unto these dry bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinew upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am Yahweh. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinew and flesh came up upon them, and skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith Yahweh Elohim, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as, as he commanded, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dry, our hope is lost. We are cut off from our part. Wherefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And they shall know that I am Yahweh when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you out of your, of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, Yahweh, have spoken it 
and performed it, saith Yahweh. The word of Yahweh came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companion. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companion, and join them one to another and to one stick, and they shall become one in mine hand. And when the children of my people shall speak unto thee, saying, Will thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribe of Israel his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, that they shall be one in mine hand. And the stick whereon thou writest shall be in mine hand before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, and will gather them on one side and bring them into their own land, and will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall no more, that they, sh they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Mm -hmm. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions, but I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people and I will be their Elohim. And David my servant shall be king over them and they all shall have one shepherd and they shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. And it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, Yahweh, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forever. That was Ezekiel 37 chapter. Thank you, Dr. Myra Coates. Just want to remind everyone to please silence all cell phones and any other electrical devices at this time. And tonight class will be a three speaker format. And our first speaker for this evening session will be Dr. Casey Jones. Grateful uh, to have another day. Uh, I want to give all honor to Yahweh Elohim for this on the Ark of the Tribe. 
feet. Anything to gain, our praise goes to him. I am uh, grateful uh, just to give another opportunity to learn of Yahweh, Elohim, purpose, pattern, and plan for salvation. This school, I, this school was established by a divine vision and revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in 1931. And Yahweh Elohim gave him the vision. And he encouraged us to investigate to see if these things are true and don't just to take his word for it, but to prove it until you're satisfied. And I've had to do my own investigation. And I can say, I'm satisfied. Mm -hmm. And, um, It's just by grace and mercy, really, that uh, you learn anything. Mm -hmm. Like Yahweh is true name, and being Yahweh the Father, and it's been erroneously uh, inserted with the word Lord and Elohim, which is a divine title. It's not God as the world chooses to call him. Erroneous name and the name of the Holy Spirit, which is Yahshua the Messiah. See, now these three are one, and Jesus Christ is erroneous name. There's no J in Hebrew, Greek, or Latin, and the Christ is derived from Krishna, which is a Hindu sky god, and our founder encouraged us to to go to the Law and the Prophets if we were going to learn anything about what Yahshua the Messiah was doing here on Earth Plane, which is fulfilling this Law and Prophet and remo removing them out of the way through his death, burial, and resurrection. Um, but I don't want to get jump ahead um, this all started with a, a promise made to Abraham. And can we have, uh, I believe, Genesis 15 and 12. And the scripture lesson was good because, um, you know, we spoke about uh, Yahweh's army and can these dry bones live. And the bones of, of the man is synonymous with the man's soul. So, and it's also flaking unto the holy place, the bones of man, because it typifies a body within a body. And Joseph, who was a forerunner from Abraham, one of Abraham's son, who was a forerunner down here in Egypt, he told the children of Israel to, to take his bones when he passed away from, they would, they would take his bones from down here. I believe it's Genesis 50 and 24, if we can find that. And that other scripture I might. Genesis 15 and 12. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Yeah, thank you. Um, Joseph was a forerunner when given 
authority due to um, a number of dreams that he interpreted. Um, now, that, the promise, the children of Israel, well, Abraham's seed was Isaac, and Isaac begot Jacob. And Jacob's name was changed to Israel. But due to three families in the land, the children of Israel were driven down here into Egypt. And at first things didn't seem so tough, but it was another Pharaoh that rose up and put the children of Israel under heavy bondage and slavery. And during this time, Moses is born up under a death decree uh, and Pharaoh is killing all male children uh, Hebrew children and Moses is born under this death decree uh, maybe we can have um, Exodus 1 and um, 1 and 14 oh yeah yeah yes ma'am okay this is Genesis 15 and 24 and Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and Elohim surely will surely visit you and bring you out of the land, unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah, that's right. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, Elohim will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. That's right. Um, now, the children of Israel are under a, um, slavery at this time. And Moses is born under this death decree. Um, his mother hides him for some three months. And when she uh, could no longer hide him, she made an art of uh, bulrushes and dubbed it with pitch and slime and she placed the child Moses in, therein. And that ark that she built and placed by the <clears throat> River Nile was likened unto a death. Mm -hmm. And she put Moses in the uh, ark and Pharaoh's uh, daughter came to bathe herself at the, at the river and she heard Moses crying out. And maybe we could have a little bit of that because this typify this okay well maybe i don't want to jump ahead this is exodus Two and three out of the uh, King James of the Bible. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him was a little child, she hid him three months. And when she could not hide him longer, and when she could no longer hide him, she took him from the ark of bushes and dotted it with slime and pitched it and pitched and put the child therein, and she laid it in the flag by the river Flint. And his, uh, and his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her handmaid walked along by the riverside, and when she saw the ark among the flag, she sent her handmaid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him, and said, this is one of the Hebrew children. Mm-hmm, that's right. Um, yes, then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call, the, call to be a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to go, said to her, go. 
and the handmaid went and called the child's mother. Mm -hmm. And Moses is, is turned over to uh, Pharaoh's daughter and is raised in Pharaoh's daughter's house, and he becomes accustomed to the ways of the Egyptians and the deities. Uh, you know, the, the deities that, that are in Egypt and they worship everything. Um, it's the sun. They had a deity for everything. And so, uh, did I have anything else? I didn't. Now, now, um, now Moses is reared up and he learns the deities and the customs of the Egyptians and at the age of 40 he sees a but he understands that he is not a uh, Egyptian it's also in the Hebrews where I don't, I don't know if you all can find this where it says that Moses uh, would not serve the deities of Egypt. Hebrews, mm -hmm. the 11th chapter. Yeah. And, um, 11 Hebrews. Yes, and uh, so at the age of 40, Moses uh, sees an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, and he intercedes as a peacemaker, which really testifies of Yahshua the Messiah, who is the comforter, which um, maybe we can have that in John 14 and 26. And also uh, another, I have some different things coming to mind, but uh, maybe I'm jumping over the place because Isaiah s speaks and says, to whom shall he teach knowledge? Those who are drawn winged from the breast, which basically you're drawn, the breast is likened unto the law and the prophets. And that's how he's going to teach. Because the law and the prophets testify to Yahshua the Messiah on everything he would come in to do. Uh, and to to be the atoning sacrifice for mankind. Um, but I, I call for some different things. This is John 14 and 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, now, Moses uh, kills that Egyptian and he buries him in the sand. And the next day, he, and that's the principle. Uh, of a, a blood principle because he kills him and buries him in the sand, the death principle. And he comes out the next day and he sees t two Hebrews striving amongst themselves and he intercedes. And they tell Moses, who, who made you a judge and a prince over us? Do you intend to kill us as you did the Egyptian? So Moses knows this thing is known and he flees into the land of Midian, and he sits down on a well, which also testifies to Yahshua the Messiah, who also was at that well. I don't know exactly where that one is. Uh, maybe you all can find that one, but. Uh, so this principle, it, he kills the Egyptian, he buries him in the sand, and he flees out here into the land of Midian and sits on the well, and he marries one of the daughters of Jethro well. 
and he becomes a shepherd out here. And it's, you know, he be, as he's out here hurting, and that also testifies to Yahshua the Messiah, who in John he says, "My sheep hear my voice." And now Moses is out here, and Yahweh introduces himself. He comes upon this burning bush. The bush is burning, but it's not being consumed. And what Moses is going through, he's having a vision here. And the spirit uh, Elohim is in this burning bush. And Moses is told to take off his shoes because the ground that he was standing on is holy ground. And we come to find out this holy ground will be the place where the tabernacle pattern is built. And it's also the holy place in the migratory pattern. And but Moses is, can we get the Exodus, the third chapter, if you want to get a little bit on that. But um, I, I'm skipping. Ten devastating plagues was poured out here on the deities of Egypt. Because these plagues uh, were poured out on these deities of Egypt. And Egypt represents the world where it's confusion and ignorance of your creator. They're worshiping everything. And Yahweh was devastating these uh, Egyptian deities. And the tenth and final final plague, which was the death of the firstborn, male and beast, Moses tells the people to institute the Passover and tells the children of Israel to take out a lamb, an innocent lamb. It couldn't have any spots or blemishes, and they were to examine this lamb. Um, but I probably jumped ahead. I don't know. Did you see what Moses refused to do? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I didn't. Who shall we teach? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is Hebrews 11 and 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of Yahweh than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Mm -hmm. And um, so Yahweh poured out 10 devastating plagues on the Egyptian deities. And then Egypt is also representative of this outer court here in this mosaic tabernacle. And they're taking out their lamb, they had to put the blood, they had to strike the blood on four corners on the inside of their houses on the Upper door post, two side posts, and dip from the Lord Basin, making a four point configuration of blood. And this innocent lamb testifies to Yahshua the Messiah. Um, see, when he comes on the earth plane, John calls him out. Right? And he, maybe we can have uh, John 1 and 29. But Yes, ma'am. You want John first? Yeah, yeah, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, this is John 4 and I'll start at 4 and 6. <coughs> now, Jacob's well was there, was there. Yahshua, therefore, being weary with his journey, sat thus at the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Continue. 
Then cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Yahshua said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that this how is it that thou, being a Jew, ask a drink of me? Now this woman is from Samaria, represents the nations of the world, the different nations of the world. <clears throat> Continue. Which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Yahshua answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of Elohim, and who it is, is saying to thee, Give me to drink. Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given you, given you living waters. That's right. Okay. And you want to bring John about Paul Joshua or Exodus? You want to go there? Now, uh, Exodus, because Moses is here at this burning bush, and um, Yahweh Elohim introduces himself to Moses. Before that, they don't, they, they know him as El Shaddai, which is Almighty Provider. And Moses is the first person who receives the name of Yahweh. Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is Exodus 3 and 3 and 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flat flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, even to Horeb. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And, and that also, uh, I don't know if you all can find, where Yahweh Elohim says he is a consuming fire. You understand? And it's it's a continual burning going on, even in this earth plane. If you it's the lava and the volcano, that molten lava that's burning. And if you can't tell, the earth plane is heating up mm -hmm. with so much stuff jumping off uh, in your political world, you got corruption, uh, you know, violence. And the, you know, so, but nevertheless, continue. Third verse. Now Moses said, I will not turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when Elohim saw that he, when Elohim saw that he turned aside to see, Yahweh called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereupon thou standest is holy ground. And Moses said, I, and moreover he said, I am the Elohim of thy father, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Elohim. Yes, um, and see when you when you take off your shoes, what's on the bottom of your feet is your soul. And one thing Yahweh Elohim says that all souls are mine. I don't know if we can find that, but man is made in the likeness and image of Yahweh Elohim. He's made body, soul, and spirit. Continue. Okay. Okay. And Elohim said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, and I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land, and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, 
and had seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Moses said unto Elohim, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, and ye shall serve Elohim upon this mountain. Yes, sir. And, and that came to pass. Moses declares the name of Yahweh to Pharaoh. And, and uh, Do you want me to drop down to the name? Yes, ma'am. Okay, 14th verse. And Elohim said, and Moses, well, 13. And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The Elohim of your fathers hath sent me unto you, they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And Elohim said unto Moses, Aya Asha Aya. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I will be have sent thee unto you. And Elohim said, Moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. That's right. And Moses declared that name because there was power in that name. He declared that to Pharaoh. And now, Pharaoh. Yahweh Elohim told Moses that he would harden Pharaoh's heart, which he did. And so Pharaoh pursues the children of Israel. Uh, they leave out of Egypt through principles okay, of, of a death, that death of the lamb, and burial because they went through the divided waters of the Red Sea following the phenomenal cloud with the angel in the cloud. Now, this typifies uh, Yahshua, who is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And also, these children of Israel, and maybe we can have it in the 14th chapter of Exodus where he tells people to stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. Um, yes. This is Exodus 14 and 1. Oh, you want me to go to, he said, stand still? That far, go down to 12 first. Well, where did, whichever feel, you feel the best with. Okay. All right. So, Exodus 14 and 12, well, 11. And he said because, unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us out forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve Elohim? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of Yahweh, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Yahweh shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Yes. And, uh, and you know, that's a mouthful in itself. Uh, it's another scripture that says, and your patience possess ye your soul. You know, and 
Yahweh is the one who's going to do the fighting. So, uh, but this principle was uh, the children of Israel go through on dry ground. And this is uh, death, pointing to a death, a burial, and a resurrection, which Yahshua the Messiah goes through a death, a burial, and a resurrection on the third day, according to the scripture. And uh, now we get to this tabernacle, which I got five minutes left. Uh, but this is a wonderful tabernacle. Everything go, everything is made and goes according to this tabernacle pattern, which was showed to Moses in the mount when he was called up here. And that each day of the physical creation is compared to this tabernacle pattern. The small, smallest uh, particle of matter is an atom, which is a proton, a neutron, an electron, and it's, it's threefold, proton, neutron, electron, yet one atom. And also, when you look at in, in man's physical body, his blood, the blood, it, uh, is red and uh, the first man Adam means red man or the red man you understand and but Yahshua the Messiah is, is his is through his death and burial and resurrection is his, he shed his blood for mankind those that will believe on him and this body contains uh, the fullness, uh, Yahweh Elohim is a unity. He's not a trinity as the world teaches. Uh, maybe we could have uh, First John three, uh, First John five and seven. Uh, and this tabernacle pattern was a dwelling place for Yahweh Elohim. He said he would dwell up upon the wings of the uh, cherubims here in this most holy place. It was threefold. It was a most holy place, holy place in the court roundabout. And it was seven steps. First step being a gate, uh, or, or second step being an altar of sin sacrifice with uh, four points of blood. And uh, now Yahshua the Messiah is the only atoning sacrifice for mankind because he got four points of blood on him on the cross. And he's also, now he was also buried. The third step he is the brazen labor. He's buried in Joseph's new tomb. And the third day he resurrects. You got a cup of holy anointing oil to typify spirit. So you have uh, a principle of death, burial, and resurrection here in this outer, outer court. Now, the fourth step is the door. Yahshua the Messiah comes on the scene and says, I am the door. And the fifth step is the holy place with a seven branch golden candlestick, which was uh, lit um, at, what, 3 p.m. and snuffed out at 9. Mm -hmm. So this, it was always continual light in this tabernacle pattern. And, and, it's, and that's my time. But uh, if anybody got it, anything out of that, all praise and honor goes to Yahweh Elohim, to Yahshua Messiah. I'm good for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Jones. I'll be the second speaker. I don't have much on my heart and mind, but Yahweh willing to use me as a vessel to edify the body. And um, I'm not sure how long I'll be up here, but um, I enjoyed the remarks of the previous speaker. And um, as he was going to end at the tabernacle, and I asked Joshua, just, you know, where should I go? But since he got to the, the holy place, <laughs> I'll just continue there. And... Uh, let, I, I'm just going to start over from the steps because as he was saying that, it, look up, uh, I know 
uh, look up tabernacle for me and um, pattern. And by coming down to this class, I can say that, you know, I didn't know much about that uh, Yahweh, that uh, he was a pattern, or he is the pattern of the universe. And I only knew that, uh, you know, when people, a pattern is important, especially for designers. You know, when people make dresses and everything, you have to have a pattern to go by. Even with buildings, you know, when people build buildings, the architects, they have to draw it out first, then they proceed <coughs> to get, you know, the people to start the building of the tabernacle, of a pattern, of whatever their Ephesus is. So they have to go according to the printout, the blueprint, and uh, they have to follow the instructions specifically. And by coming to this class, I realized that there's a way that our creator wants us to know him because before we came in here, we had no idea about him. Well, I'll say, well, I can say we, none of us did because we thought we did, but our whole mind had to be changed of how we thought he wanted us to worship him. You know, you got so many different uh well, nationalities, but also uh, ideologies out here. You got uh, Krishna, Hindu, Buddhism, uh, Catholicism, uh, Buddha, Allah. It's so many uh, Jehovah Witnesses. It's just so many Black Hebrew Israelites. It's just so many denominations of religions that they think they're right about knowing their creator. And when you come down to one of these classes, you find out that that's not true. You know, I was listening to a lecture of the founder, and he was talking about how, you know, people always ask you, uh, like, uh, well, what church do you belong to? And he's like, they think that's such an intelligent question, but it is to be said. You know, the Bible says there's only one church, one body. But they always like, oh, well, what church do you go to? What Ephesus, what building, you know, like, it's such a big deal, and it's not. And you come to find out that Yahweh, our Elohim, you know, is a prescribed way to get to know him. We just can't get to him. We have to go through the Savior, who is Yahshua the Messiah, to get to the Father. We just can't go directly to him ourselves, which I thought that I could. And you come to find out that that was an error. You know, it was wrong. Mm -hmm. So... Um, if you have the tabernacle and the um, thing. And then, well, I'm going to go get some of the aims, too, because that's a prescribed way. And the founder, he was meticulous about setting up this school, the order of operation that it went in, and, and we still do that for, to this present day, you know, the order of operations, because there's always a prescribed way to get to know somebody, even in the natural. Even when you go on a job interview, you have a set time, a set appointment, they give you who to ask for, and then you wait, and you come in there and at one o'clock, or they may call your name, uh, Sister, I mean, Rose Taylor, whoever's waiting for you, and then if May get up, they'll be like, well, which one of y'all is Rose Taylor? <laughs> you know, say, no, I'm Rose Taylor. And she's like, oh, my appointment's at one. No, my appointment's at one. So they'll figure out like who appointment really was at one, and then that person will go in because <clears throat> it was set up that way. Oh, may your appointment is at two. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I thought it was at one as well. So that's the prescribed order operations. Okay. Okay, this is the definition of pattern um, from the Mirror University of Online Dictionary. Mm -hmm. A form or model proposed for imitation. It says a form or model proposed for imitation. Something designed or used as a model for making things. See, something designed, this tabernacle pattern was designed and built according to what Moses saw in his vision. And Yahweh told him to make it exactly how you saw it in the mount. Don't deviate from it. You know, he had to put his spirit in him to make him not deviate for, and that's a lot to remember. So Yahweh had to be building his own pattern because he could not mess it up. 
just like from a regular uh, uh, natural standpoint, if the foundation of a house is not that great, it's going to crumble. You know, so you have to have that strong, solid foundation in order to build something. Okay. Um, an artistic, musical, literary, or mechanical design. Or artistic form. design or form. Okay. And a natural or a chance configuration. Mm -hmm. A reliable sample of traits. See, this, this is a reliable example to get us to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. He is the tabernacle pattern, okay? That's good. Uh, what, what I had, pattern and what else? Tabernacle, yeah. And come to find out in here that I just thought I was made in the likeness and image of my parents, but you come in here and find out that you're made in the likeness and image of your creator. Yes, you know, not not your parents. You just came through those loins, but you made up in his likeness and in, image. You have a chest, you have a, a head cavity, a chest cavity, and an abdominal cavity. Will go along to with this tabernacle, which the most holy place. He Yahweh is the head, and the holy place was where Yahshua there, the Holy Spirit which is your chest area, and then the holy place is here, and the court roundabout, and the bottom is your abdominal cavity. So it's a prescribed way. That's how we made his likeness and the image. We threefold, but still just one person. And some people find that hard to believe because they think God is three different people. They think you got the Lord, then you got God, uh, the Word of Son, and then you got the Holy Spirit. By coming down here, we find out that these three they're, they're one. There is one person taking on a different manifestation. We can't know Yahweh in his pure spirit state. So he took on shape his form as Yahweh Elohim. And then he further broke, broke himself down as Yahshua Messiah. Which Yahweh, Yahshua means Yahweh is salvation. See, he came down from his high and lofty state and took on shape and form as Yahweh Elohim and further in the flesh as Yahshua Messiah so he can save us. Okay. This is Tabernacle from mm -hmm. the Mary Webster Online Dictionary. Mm -hmm. A house of worship, a receptacle, receptacle a house of worship. I'm sorry, I'm being interrupted. You like to tell a house of worship. So we come to find out that our body is the tabernacle, which it, we not even our own. Our body is a tabernacle, a place of worship. You don't have to go to a physical place to worship your creator. You come down here and find out that he's in you. He speaks to you. He leads and guides you. Before I knew it, I thought, you know, the little small voice, my conscience would tell me, don't do this, Kenyatta. Don't, don't go left. Don't go to the right. Come to find out. Whenever I listened, things would go pretty good. But when I didn't, things went pretty bad. So you come down here and learn who that is speaking to you, which I come down here and find out that it is the Holy Spirit who is Yahshua the Messiah. And that's that intimate relationship that you can have with your creator um, that you didn't know that you could have before. So you talk to him in his tabernacle, in his your body, which is his. We are not our own. If you get that scripture just for reference for me, you are not your own. See, we don't belong to ourselves. We belong to Yahweh Elohim. And we are his, and he's trying to guide us through the Holy Spirit. It's a round trip. We, we came on a pure spirit, so we have to go back up the same way we came. When he take out this, when he get up off the mercy seat, you know, it's going to be over. We're going back to the Father because we are not our own. We don't belong to ourselves. We belong to him. Okay. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians. What? Know ye not if your See, body... says what? Because you didn't know. What? Know ye not. Your body. Your body... Is the temple is the temple of the Holy Spirit of the Holy Spirit which is in you which is in you is not outside of you the Holy Spirit is in you which okay. you have of Yahweh see you have it of Yahweh and you are not your own and you are not your own Kenya didn't say that that's what the scriptures say 
See, I come down here and find out that I'm not my own. I thought I was my mother and father's. I ain't even theirs. I'm not my own. I belong to Yahweh Elohim. I'm not my own. We're not our own, okay? Well, you are brought with a price. See, we were bought with a price. And that price we were bought from was this precious blood of Yahshua the Messiah. See, he paid the price. He died. Uh, he died like an outcast dog to save us, to save sinners. He did that because he loved us. He paid the price to be the boss. And read that one more time, Dr. Cohen. But ye are bought with the price. See, who's bought with the price, the precious blood of Yahshua Messiah. Okay, go ahead. Therefore, glorify Yahweh in your body. See, it says, therefore, now this is to prescribe what we have to do it. Therefore, glorify Yahweh in your body. In, well, it says your body, but go ahead. And in your spirit. And in your spirit. So you got a body and you got a spirit. Which are his. What? Wait a minute. You just said glorify him in my body <laughs> with my spirit. But now you're saying which is his. It sounds like it's contradictory, but it's not. Go, is there any more to that? That was it? Okay. See, we couldn't have found out. We thought just, that's why they say, uh, don't take uh, the scriptures I'm probably messing it up for your interpretations. You know, you're thinking of it wrong. But you come down here and get corrected about uh, how the scriptures, what they're saying and what they're, what they're really talking about and what they actually mean. Because if you're just reading that currently, you're going to think, yeah, that's my body, my temple. Well, say that. And some pastors run with that and leave out the bottom part, which he said, which is his. It's not ours. Okay. Did I have anything else help? Yeah, more definition is tabernacle. So this is prescribed way. This is prescribed way how the baby come in the world. The 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 egg and the seed just don't come together and boom, there go the baby coming out in the next day. No, it has to prescribe way. Nine months. The birth of the how we're born go according to this pattern. Okay. Okay, this is tabernacle from mm -hmm. the Merriam-Webster Online Dictionary. Mm -hmm. A tent. Sanctuary. A tent, a sanctuary. Back here, when Moses was going this tent, he would talk to Joshua, the son of Nun. He was telling him what to do, what not to do, how to get the children of Israel out of Egypt. Okay. Used by the Israelites during the Exodus. Mm -hmm. A dwelling place. See, a dwelling place. A temporary shelter. A temporary shelter because the Holy Spirit wasn't poured out back then. So it's a temporary shelter. That's like this body is a temporary shelter until we receive the Holy Spirit. Then we can read the Bible more clearly. We mm -hmm. have more understanding of our creator, how he is and how he's operating in this present kingdom age. I didn't even understand. Find for me a, a gift of the Holy Spirit or oh, it's a gift. I didn't even know nothing about the age and the dispensation or anything, what present kingdom age we're in. And it's a present. Most people, when they get a present, they're happy about it. You know, come on down to one of these classes, accept your present. This is a present. It's giving you an opportunity to get to know your creator, how he is and how he's operating in this present kingdom age. And um, it's really something to know. He's really something to know. And uh, if you just give him an opportunity, our first aim is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim. Now, why would, they, why would that be the first aim of a school? Because we was lost. We didn't know how to worship him. Uh, but it's to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is. Not how we imagined him to be before we came into this class. To help you find and know Yahweh Elohim as he really is and as he actually exists. Um, did you have anything else there? Um, yeah, where he says, uh, like, this is a gift, uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a gift and it's not, uh, not a work, yeah, it's a gift, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. And then we're going to go to the aims and read some of those scriptures. I didn't even get a chance to read the uh, scripture lesson when she went over. I would go there, but I don't even recall all of it. 
I was just wondering who else was coming through that door. <laughs> Go ahead. Ephesians 2 and 9. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll start at 2 and 8. Mm -hmm. But by grace are you saved. See, this is by grace. We are saved. It's the grace and mercy of our Creator that we are saved. Mm -hmm. Through faith. Through faith. And that's not of yourselves. See, it's not of yourselves. Well, before I thought I was doing something marvelous to worship my Creator. No. It's not of ourselves. Mm -hmm. It is the gift of Yahweh. See, it's a gift of Yahweh. He's giving you a gift, an opportunity to know him, how he really is and how he actually exists. Not of works. Not of works, come to find out. When Yahshua died on the cross and said, it's finished, it's finished. He fulfilled it. So we don't have to do these works anymore. Over here is the New Testament. It's written in your heart and in your mind. This is the gift. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Lest any man should boast. But don't boast about it. There's nothing for us to boast about. It's a gift for me. It's a gift for you. It's a gift for whoever he brings through these doors and give them an opportunity to see and hear what he says through the vessel he chooses to use. Okay? But we are his workmanship. See, we're his workmanship. We're not our own. She just read that. Okay? Created in Yahshua Messiah unto see, good works. Created in Yahshua Messiah unto good work. Which Yahweh hath ordained see, before that we should walk in them. Yahweh ordained it before the foundation of the world that we should walk, you say, in them? Okay. Do I have anything else? Okay. I'll get the angel in a second, but he was left off on this tabernacle. Okay, so we find out by coming to this class that the gate, the first step is the gate. The second step is the brazen altar of sin sacrifice. The third step is the brazen labor. You have the fourth step is the door, which is the first veil also. Then you have the fifth step is the whole holy place. And then you have the sixth step, which is the second veil. And then you have the seventh step is the most holy place. And uh, then you have, he was going over the vessels that's in here. is nine vessels, seven steps, nine vessels. You have the brazen altar of sin sacrifice. You have the brazen labor. Then you have a cup of holy anointing oil. And he stopped here with the candlestick. Uh, here for me, I think we was holding it for Casey, that Yahweh, he's a consuming fire. And come down here and find out that uh, the light, he was talking about it being snuffed out uh, at... Uh, 3 p.m., I think that's right. Yeah, 9, 9 a.m., because you had to have light continually, and it was lit back up. And then you have, give me uh, the scripture where you talk about Yahshua is the bread of life. You come to find out you had food in here. You had bread, 12 loaves on one side, 12 on the other side. Uh, a table of shoe bread with a gold crown around it. And then here the other vessel is the altar of incense which it had four points of blood on it as well. And uh, uh, it was like four ingredients, right? Uh, I don't know the four ingredients, but <laughs> it was a sweet smelling uh, scent of, uh, to Yahweh and knocked out the stench from down here and it was a sweet smelling scent to Yahweh. And then you have the Ark of the Covenant, which is a three in one configuration. You got the two archangels and you see the flash of the Shekinah here and uh, which is we come here to find out that Yahweh dwells in the most holy place of our head cavity too. Um, you have this stick figure like of a man, um, which blood go through um, a chair circle of Willis, a stick like of a man figure, because this is, you know, he's leading and guiding us in our everyday life. And before I came in here, I wasn't conscious of that. I just thought I was doing my own thing, but no, mm-mm. Yeah, I want about he Yahshua said he's the light okay. and he's the uh the uh bread and he's the intercessor. Okay, and this is John mm -hmm. eight mm -hmm. and twelve. Mm -hmm. Then spake Yahshua again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. See, he's telling them, I am the light of the world, okay? He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. See, he's saying he's the light of the world, and he that followed him should have everlasting life. And means we're going to come out of darkness and come into the light. 
Okay, go ahead. Uh, we have the one where he's the bread. It's just John 6, 48. Mm -hmm. I am that bread of life. See, he said, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. He said, they ate manna in the wilderness, but they dead. This is the bread which coming down from heaven. He said, this is the bread that comes down from heaven. Now, just said, Yahweh Elohim took on shape and form and came down as Yahshua the Messiah. Because he is that bread of life. Mm -hmm. That a man may eat thereof and not die. See, he said, you eat of the bread, you won't die neither. He said, if you got the light and you follow me, you won't die. And if you eat this bread, and you won't die. Which he is the bread. Mm -hmm. I am the living bread, which come down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Did he say that bread? He was specific. He said, this bread. He's talking about himself. Okay, any man eat of this bread, mm -hmm. he shall live forever. He shall live forever. That he again, talking about living forever in the holy place, okay? And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. See, when he said that, he gonna give his flesh. Not for you to eat his flesh. He's gonna give his flesh He's going to give up and down the cross so we can have everlasting life and eat of the bread, which is the Holy Spirit, which is him, not eating his flesh like a carnival. That he gave his life up so we can have everlasting life in him and bread forever, substance. Okay. It's Hebrews 12, outside of 28. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve Yahweh acceptably with reverence and fear. Okay. For our Elohim is a consuming fire. See, he's a consuming fire. And when he reveals something to me and I get that burning, like, it's like a, I can't explain, it's like a burn, like a love, like, oh, I see that. Oh, I'm just so overjoyed. You know, you can't really... I can't really describe it, but it feels beautiful. It feels awesome. And that's that burning, that's that consuming fire you can feel when he's revealing something to you. And get the uh, intercessor. I'm trying to get up to the most holy place. <laughs> See, he's the intercessor. Before I come down here, I maybe would ask people, oh, well, what you think about this? What you think about that? And get out everybody's opinion and whoever said the thing that I, I was like, okay. Well, most people said this way, so maybe this is what I should do. But now when I come down here, I'm like, well, wait a minute. Yasha, what should I do? What should I say? Now I'm going to him. I'm redirecting. I'm not going to my sister, my, or my sister, my friends, and everybody like that. Now I have to go to my Savior, who is Yasha Messiah, where before I was going to other people. And uh, there's a prescribed way to go, just what I just got finished talking about. Okay. This Hebrews 9.15, mm -hmm. for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, that they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Mm -hmm. See, he's the mediator between us and Yahweh. We can't go straight to him. Like I said in the beginning, I thought I could go straight to Yahweh, but by coming down here, I'm like, can't go. That ain't the way to go. There's a prescribed way to go. You have to go through Yahshua Messiah. He's the mediator between Yahweh and man. It's the uh, Holy Spirit, Yahshua Messiah. And we have to go through him to get to the Father. We can't go straight to the Father. That's why we always say in your beloved son, name of Yahshua Messiah. Um, he deserves all the glory and the honor. Okay, um, okay, that was the last thing with the intercession. Okay, then the most holy place. Uh, could you get some of the tabernacle scriptures where uh, it's a two and one configuration about the two archangels over here? And the flash of the Shekinah, I remember uh, just to digress for a second, you know, when you used to watch the Oprah show, she'd be like, oh, I had an aha moment. Well, when the Holy Spirit was still <laughs> reveal something to you, you had this aha moment. That flash of the Shekinah is flashing because it's showing you you know, he's revealing himself to you. You'd be like, oh, now I see. Now I understand. 
you know, and it's a beautiful thing to see because I was an optician and when I would, which is you, people come to the doctor and you fill a prescription and then they come pick them up and the first thing they would say is, wow, I can see. And they were like overjoyed, but I would flip it in the spirit saying, spiritually, I can see. Just, just a natural vision. They was elated to see, but the spiritual scene is something that's so joyful it's just words can't describe. But you see with the eye of understanding, well, my understanding was wrong before. I, I, didn't, I didn't see, I didn't understand nothing until I came down to one of these classes and sat down and Yahweh started revealing himself to me through Yahshua the Messiah. And this, it's just a beautiful thing, a beautiful love story. And, um, you know, they always talk about this love story about uh, Harry, well, I may get it wrong, but uh, Gone with the Wind, how that was such a miraculous love story. No, this is the best love story ever. That love story ain't got nothing on this. Our Savior, Yahshua Messiah, that, that story is nothing. It's just a story, but this this story is the, the best version of the movie. Okay, I have anything else? And if not, then, um, okay. First Chronicles 22, 19. Mm -hmm. Now set your heart and your soul to seek Yahweh your Elohim. Arise, therefore, and build ye the sanctuary of Yahweh Elohim, to bring the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh and the holy vessels of Elohim into the temple that is to be built to the name of Yahweh. See, it was built to the name of Yahweh. Because man, he is this tabernacle practice. It says, man made in the image of Elohim. He talked about how first man, first thing he created was Elohim by the pattern of the tabernacle. Okay? And we already read how we're made in the likeness of image. So you see this tabernacle, I just went over the seven steps and the vessels in here. It says the bone structure of a man represents uh, the tabernacle of man. Then you got the pillar, bars, boards in the tabernacle. Uh, let's get some of these scriptures on here. Let's get first, is that first Corinthians six? I can't tell if that's an eight or 22. Six and eight, thank you. <laughs> let's get first Corinthians six. I don't know if that's six and eight. Let me go over here. Let's get Genesis 126. This is Genesis one and 26. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh said, let us make man in our image after our, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, mm -hmm. and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. Mm -hmm. See, he said, let us make man in the image after our Elohim. Okay, get Colossians 1.35. And then, see this chart right here? We call this chart the green chart. So, it says, the creator, who was Yahweh, image, who was Elohim, by his creation, who was Yahshua the Messiah. And we're made up in that same way. Okay? okay. This is Colossians 1 and... One, it says 21, 135, or is that 8? Um, um, try Hebrews 8, I'm sorry, Hebrews 8 and 2, because I can't make that out. First Colossians 8, 25, it looks like. Okay. It's Hebrews 8 and 2. Mm -hmm. spoken, this is the song. Mm -hmm. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the true sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which Yahweh pitched and not man. See, he is the high priest who Yahweh pitched and not man. See, we, we don't take no honor and glory for nothing down here. We always give it back 
to Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua Messiah, because I just went through, he is the mediator. He is the mediator. He takes our problems, whatever we talk about to him, to Yahweh, which he already know about it, but, you know, to help us get out of whatever dilemma or situation that we're in. And I'm going to end right there. And if you got anything from me, all praise, honor, and glory go through Yahweh Elohim, through his son, Yahshua the Messiah. And with that, I'll say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And our third speaker for this evening session will be Dr. Maycomb. Good evening, class. Good evening. I really enjoyed what was shared through the previous speakers. And we're very fortunate to be able to continue to come to these classes and learn of our Creator as He really is and actually exists. Um, I know the first speaker was talking about, and the second speaker both, was talking about this tabernacle pattern. So we know this tabernacle pattern is a direct reflect of the creator himself, which is a true pattern. It says it up here, Elohim, the archetype or the original pattern of the universe. And when you look at your tabernacle pattern, as has already been brought out, is uh, nine principal vegetables, vessels, I was gonna say vegetables, nine principal vessels <laughs> in this tabernacle. It's three compartments and it's seven steps. And you can see the unity of spirit by looking at this tabernacle that was made in the wilderness of Sinai, which Yahweh in the 40th chapter of uh, Exodus 25, he said, make sure that you make them exactly the way that it was showed to you in the mount. And then what he did later when the tabernacle was to be built, he put his spirit in the men who was to build the tabernacle so that there would be no error and the tabernacle was built exactly the way it was given to Moses in that second trip in the mount. Wasn't that the second trip? This is school. In the second trip of the mount because it's reflecting our creator. So we look at, and, and it's also been talking about what can somebody get for me? Um, First Corinthians 15 chapter. And also get for me First uh, John 5 and 7. Because when you look at this tabernacle pattern, it's already been talked about it a little bit. You're going to see this principle of a death, a burial, and a resurrection, or a principle of blood, water, and spirit. They go hand in hand. Get First John 5 and 7 first. They go hand in hand. You got the death, like it's already been talked about. The previous speaker talked about these vessels in here. But this particular vessel is the altar of sin sacrifice. And we know that there were sacrifices were offered up on here daily. And it was the death principle here. And you got four points of blood that's on this uh, altar of uh, sin sacrifice. Because these four points of blood is pointing up to, it's all pointing up to Yahshua's side because he was the only acceptable sacrifice unto Yahweh Elohim, the only acceptable sacrifice, which these sacrifices that were offered up daily and yearly was a type of, and also give me Hebrews 9 chapter, I think it's Hebrews 9 and 9, you know, and you got those four points of blood here because it's pointing up to all mankind. See, when Yahshua Messiah died on that cross, and it's already been brought out, he said it is finished. Finished everything 
that was written in the law and the testimony. She fulfilled these things and brought them into a reality. But let's just go on and, and read those scriptures. This is First Corinthians, I'm sorry, this is First John 5 and 7. Mm -hmm. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Now, this is a school and not a church, and we have pictorial illustrations illustrating uh, the vision and the revelation that I found I had. If you listen to the uh, moderation, this school was founded upon a divine panoramic vision and revelation that I found I had. Okay, straight from Yahweh himself. And these are pictorial illustrations of that vision that he had. So now we're talking about there's three to bear record in heaven. We do have a uh, plate that does, um, that illustrates that point. So go ahead and start that again. First uh, John 5 and 7. Mm -hmm. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Okay, now there is a record in heaven. We never knew that. I know I say that all the time because it's unbelievable. You know, it's like, wow, who knew? Who knew that there is a record in heaven? Okay, so it says that there are three the bear record in heaven, read. The Father, mm -hmm. the Word, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And these three are one. Okay, so now you see right here in this place, it says unity of the Spirit. And we just read there, it said the Father, which is Yahweh. The, the Father, let's read that again. The Father, what else? And, the, and there are three, that, for there are three that bear record in heaven. Uh-huh. Father, the Father, which is Yahweh, mm -hmm. the, Word, the Word, that's Yahweh Elohim, and the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, which is Yahshua Messiah, that's the unity of the Spirit, read. And these three are one. And these three are one. Now we know that the tabernacle has three, three compartments, and you see three compartments here too. And you see that unity of the Spirit here, this would be like type of heaven, okay? And you see that one right here in this uh, third compartment, which is like in the heaven, and you can look at your, um, you can look at your tabernacle pattern and see a principle of that because you have a three-in-one configuration in the most holy place of the tabernacle. This, this Ark of the Covenant is a three-in-one configuration, pointing up to the unity of the Spirit, or these three are one. Continue to read. And there are three that bear witness Okay, now that record has a witness in the earth. Next scripture after that I want is 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. So now that record in heaven has a witness in the earth. Read. Mm -hmm. In the earth, the spirit. Okay, so now it says the spirit. Now if you look at this chart, this is like unto the holy place. You got the spirit right here. Go ahead. The water. The water. Now that's coming down into the court roundabout. The water. And the blood. And the blood. Now these three agree in one, so we can go right over here and look at our tabernacle pattern, and we can see the principle of blood, because we know they had to kill those sacrifices, so that's the principle of blood. And then you have a principle of water, because they had to wash those sacrifices daily, and it's really twofold, because the priest, before he officiated here, he had to cleanse himself here as well. See, so it's a washing and rejuvenation and also the washing of those sacrifices. And then we know before the high priest uh, took on the office of high priest, he had to be anointed here at the door with that cup of holy anointing oil, which is a type of spirit, so that he could officiate on the daily and yearly duties of this tabernacle pattern. And we know this cup of holy anointing oil, it covered the high priest completely, all the way from the top of his head, of his robes, every single aspect of him had to be covered, all the way down to his feet. And that's pointing up to a quickening, you see what I'm saying, or pointing up to that spirit principle. So right here, we can get an idea of what that's talking about. Because remember, Romans 1, 19 and 20, it says that we have to look at the things that are made. So we look at this tabernacle that was made, and we can see the principle, the three-in-one principle here, that three to bear record in heaven, the Father, Word, and Holy Spirit, these three are one, and then the witness in the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Okay, just like uh, I think one of the speakers was talking about the birth of a baby. That's something you can't deny. There's something you can't deny. You know, it's like the, uh, there's a show of blood. Okay, there's a show of blood. Then the water break. Okay, and then the baby comes and, and takes in that breath of life. That's like an unto spirit. Now that is something every man can on the face of the earth came in that way. 
And that's something that you can say, well, I don't believe this or whatever, but that's something you can't deny. You came in, blood, water, spirit. And it was 40 weeks in the building. Just like this tabernacle was 40 weeks and nine months in the building. And guess what? We come in spiritually the same way. The exact same way. We get ready, we get ready to read it. Um, 1 Corinthians uh, 15 and 1. See, because we, blood, water, and spirit is Joshua's ID. Uh, the first speaker brought out beautifully when he was going through this trek of the children of Israel. You know how... You know, they had to put the blood on this door. You see what I'm saying? They had to come to the divided waters, the Red Sea. You got a blood, water, spirit principle here. Even when Moses uh, killed that Egyptian and buried him in the sand, there's a blood, water, spirit principle there. See, this is, we can go back and we can look at all these Bible stories and we can see that it's really Yahshua's ID. We're able to identify him through uh, looking at the uh Turning over and turning over the principle of death, burial, resurrection, or blood, water, spirit. We see it over and over and over again, the same principle. See, that's the repetition, the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua Messiah. The principle of blood, water, spirit. Okay, go ahead and read uh, 1 Corinthians 15 chapter. This is 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 mm -hmm. out of the Holy Name Bible. Mm -hmm. Moreover, brethren, I moreover, brethren, I declare, or okay, declare, sorry, I was over there something else. <laughs> The gospel. I now see, now this is Paul talking, right? Uh -huh. And he said he's declaring the gospel. Now, what he can really say is not going to uh, di differentiate from what we just shared right. in 1 Corinthians, uh, I'm sorry, in 1 John 5 and 7. It's not going to differentiate from that at all. So it's, it's, the story don't change, because Yahweh say he don't change. Right. Okay, so go ahead and read. Uh, so, well, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. Mm -hmm. which and I that's the same thing that we're doing. That story that we're reading here, it's occurring the same way with us down here now. And we know that Paul, he's in the same age that we in, but he was in the beginning of this age. See, we're at the end of this age, but the story don't change. He said he done preached it unto you. Read. Which also ye have received. And you receive it. Mm -hmm. And wherein you stand. You can stand in it. Also now he's talking about the gospel. He's talking about the gospel of Yahshua Messiah. He said, it's preached unto you, you receive it, you can stand in it, and you're saved in it. Go ahead. If you keep in memory. Okay, now it said, if you keep in memory, uh, read, uh, is the first Corinthians where it says, he bring all things back to your members. Where is that at? Is that first Corinthians? Uh, I don't know where that is. John, John 14, 26. That's it. Read that, and then I want you to go back. It says, it says, it says, um, if you keep in memory. Okay, now we really need to understand how we're going to be able to do that. Okay, go ahead and read that. John 14, 26. Okay, maybe that's, that's, right. no, that's, that's right. it. That's it. That's it. Okay, read it. John 14, 26. Mm -hmm. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Okay, the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. We know that's Yahshua Messiah. Read. Whom the Father will send in my name. See, Yahweh is sending him in the name of Yahshua, which means Yahweh is salvation. Read. Shall teach you all things. See, now he said he's going to teach the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. He's the one teaching all things, read. And bring all things to your remembrance. And he's bringing all things to your remembrance. You know, we have, to, we have to understand that there's no way that we can utter any of this if it wasn't for the comforter, mm -hmm. okay, which is the Holy Spirit that's teaching us all things through the vessels that are set before you. He's teaching all things. And he's bringing things back to our remembrance. See, this is the Holy Spirit. The comforter is doing this. We don't have that ability. We do not have that ability to do that. Right. See, because we're talking about spirit. See, Yahweh is spirit. And they that worship him must, which is an absolute, must worship him spirit truth. How the heck are we going to do that? 
Okay? Everybody got their own. I'm doing me. I'm doing me. It's my thing. You know, this is my world. The world according to me. You see what I'm saying? So how the heck are we going to be in unity about our creator if he ain't the one that puts us there? Right. See, we can't put ourselves there. We all, before we came up in here, every single one of us had an idea of how we wanted our creator to be. And for the most part, it was either based on our family's tradition, you see what I'm saying, or based on what we wanted God to be. Right. You see what I'm saying? But this school, the first aim of the school says to help you find, see, find and know. To find and know Yahweh as he really is and as he actually exists, not the way you think he should be, not the way your tradition or your felt your family says he is. You see what I'm saying? Not the way you know you you want him to be, but the way he really is and actually exists. Go ahead. Uh, whatsoever I have said unto you. So he's bringing all things back to your remembrance. Whatsoever he said, he is the one that's doing the teaching. He's the one that's doing the preaching. You see what I'm saying? It's the Holy Spirit. You know. Okay, now you can go back over there. Uh, in Corinthians. You only start over by 15 yeah. and 2. Okay. By which also ye are saved. Okay, now you, you, um, it's preached unto you. It's a process, y'all. It's preached unto you. You receive it. You're able to stand in it. You see, because in this school, we have evidence and proof. See, we're not just up here, you know, God, and God said, no. yeah, it's in there, it's in the Bible. You see what I'm saying? But where's your evidence? Where's your proof? Are you able to stand on this? And it says that Yahshua is the rock, okay? Not only is Yahshua the rock, he's the chief cornerstone. Not just the cornerstone, but the chief cornerstone. Okay, numero uno, baby. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You know, number one, the chief cornerstone. Have you ever uh, have you ever looked up about a cornerstone? The cornerstone of a building is the main part of the building. If that cornerstone is taken out of the building, the building eventually is going to crumble. Okay. So now, see, we're looking at principles. We're looking at Romans one nineteen and twenty. Something that we can look at physically to understand a spiritual principle. So now it says that Yahshua is the chief cornerstone. So it says you can stand in this. Right. See, and Yahshua is the rock. See, so you can stand him in you. You can stand in this thing. Can't nobody knock you to, to and fro with every winter doctrine. I know I was like a little fella before I came up in here. You see what I'm saying? I'm the fella. I'm over here. I'm going to the second bed. All right, I'm over here. I'm going to get my numer numerology chart done. Then I'm over here studying with the Rastacrucians. Then I'm over here with the triune cells. I mean, I was just a feather, man. You see what I'm saying? But in this gospel, you can stand in this. You can depend on it. It's not going to let you down. And it gives you strength. It gives you confidence. You know what I mean? Mm, go ahead. Now we're talking about the gospel now. And we're still dealing with that principle of blood, water, spirit, death, burial, resurrection. Go ahead. If you keep in memory what I have preached. And we just read the deal of what that's about. Joshua's the one that got to bring all things back to your remembrance. That's the deal, see. It said if you keep in memory, you can't keep nothing in memory if he don't put it and bring it back to your remembrance. See, whatever he's taught, whatever he done showed you. You see what I'm saying? So don't get it twisted. See, you and I are extras in the movie, baby. He's the author. He's the finisher. He's the producer. See, and he's playing all roles. We just extras of no merit. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Of no merit. Yashim Messiah is the only one that gets the honor, glory, and praise up in here. Up in here. Up in here. You dig what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> but go ahead. Go ahead. Unless uh, what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Unless you have believed in vain, vanity. It means nothing. You're just going through the motions. You just, it, it doesn't matter. You see, go ahead. For I delivered unto you, first of all, mm -hmm. that which I also received. Okay, now he said that he's delivering. 
See, and it's the same story. We got the same story. We're only delivering what we have received. See, we ain't up here trying to get uh, no glory for ourselves, honey. Right. Now, nah, you in the wrong place if you want that. You ain't going to get that here. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Because the only one that deserves the honor, glory, and praise is Yahshua Messiah. See, and that's the one that's going to get it. You see, up in here. You see what I'm saying? But go ahead. Uh, which I also received that how that the Messiah died for our sins according to the Now I said how he died. See, that's that death principle. It says how he died for our sins. And he did it according to the scriptures. Read uh, Isaiah 8 and 20. And I also want to get uh, the first speaker uh, touched on this a little bit about whom shall he teach knowledge. Then a wean from the milk. Get both of those. But continue to read there. It says how he died for our sins, and he did it according to the scriptures. He just didn't do it any old kind of way. And we thought the scriptures, you know, was the, uh, the Bible. I know I did, but we come up in here, and we find out that the scriptures are the first 39 books of the Bible. See, so we can go back there. Yahshua said he come in a volume of the book. He said it was written of him. But how is it written of him? We're looking at the principle of blood, water, spirit. Death, burial, resurrection, which is the gospel, which we read right here. Go ahead. And then he was buried. Now that he buried, there's that water principle. See, he was buried, read. And then he rose again the third day. Now he rose again the third day, and that's a whole nother story. You got to keep coming. There's a whole lot in this. We getting ready to uh, go on this uh, holiday called Easter. Which, which is a mixing uh, something Christian-like, as they call it, with paganism. Because they have the holiday of Easter represented by a bunny. You see what I'm saying? Now, what that got to do with Yahshua? Do y'all read anything in the Bible about, well, it was a bunny rabbit back there, and a bunny laying eggs? Come on. You know, but, but you know what? It ain't nothing to laugh about, because you know what? I used to believe it. I used to have my little dress and dress up on Easter Sunday. You see what I'm saying? Have my little basket with my candy. You see what I'm saying? But we didn't know no better. They didn't say, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We've been set free from all that stuff. You know? We never thought about, you know, okay, it's supposed to be commemorating uh, the Messiah's uh, resurrection, but they have it represented by a bunny Laying eggs. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's dealing with that paganism. Yeah. Dealing with, you know, because the Easter Bunny has a whole lot of babies when they have babies. See? And it's pointing up to Esther, which is a god of fertility. You see what I'm saying? Look these things up. Right. They're right there. All you got to do is look them up. You see what I'm saying? You know, but anyway, go ahead. According to the scriptures. See, and it's all done according to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. that he was seen that's, that's good there. Did I ask for Isaiah 8 and 20? Okay, so it says that he died, buried, and rose again the third day, but he did it according to the scriptures. That's why Yahshua said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It's written to me. See, because he did it according to the scripture. He just said, Well, Jesus died for our sins. You see what I'm saying? He did it a certain kind of way. He did it according to the scriptures, which you gleaning the principles of death, burial, resurrection, which we read as the gospel, because Paul said, I declare to you the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's the death, burial, and resurrection, which is pointing up to blood, water, spirit. Okay, go ahead and get Isaiah 8 and 20. This is Isaiah 8 and 20. Mm -hmm. To the law and to the testimony. Okay, now it says to the law. And to the testimony. Now you see right up here, and I never, I'm just seeing it really. Checking this out, check this out, y'all. It's a pattern or plan. Law and testimony. Now we know that the law is the first five books of the Bible. And the testimony is the remaining 34 books of the Bible. 39 books in all, what they commonly call the Old Testament. Now they're saying right here in your Bible, to the law and to the testimony, read. They speak not according to this word. See, if they speak not according to this word, and we come up in here, we had to find out what the word was. I thought it was the Bible. 
You see what I'm saying? The word of God carrying it to church every Sunday. You see what I'm saying? But we go, you know, because we ain't got time to get it all, see. But you can go to John 1 and 1 and read what the word is. It says the word was with Yahweh and the word was Yahweh. And when you read about all those uh, prophets and stuff like that, it says the word of Yahweh came unto me saying. And the word came unto me saying. And the word said. So it says if they speak not according to this word, read. It is because there is no light in them. See, it's because there ain't no light in them. And we come up in here and find out the light is synonymous with understanding. Okay, get that other scripture by him, the wing from the mill. This is Isaiah 28 9. Mm -hmm. Whom shall he teach now? See, now here, here go again. We read over there in John 14 16. Well, what was it? John 14 26. That he's bringing all things back to your remembrance. Whatever he has shown to you or to teach you. Now it's, it's not changing. This is right here. Where we reading at? Isaiah. So we're reading in Isaiah. And it said, whom shall he teach? He's teaching. It's not saying, well, who you going to teach? It didn't say that. It said, whom shall he teach? Read. And whom shall he make to understand? See, that's the thing, guys. He said, whom shall he teach? Doctrine. No, whom shall he teach? Knowledge. And whom shall he make? You know? It says that he's making you understand. You're not doing this on your own. That's something that's really been on my heart and mind lately. It's not us. It's all him doing it for us. We can go back and look at the children of Israel. Go back to our schoolmaster. When they got over there in Canaan's land, was, who was fighting their battles for them? Joshua. Joshua. You see what I'm saying? It's the same thing down here psychologically and spiritually. He's doing all the work. He paid the cost to be the boss. Mm -hmm. Just like the previous speaker said, he said it's finished. Mm -hmm. All this stuff is done away with. See, now in this age, we're worshiping him in spirit and in truth. See, but go ahead. Them that are weaned from the milk. It says, them that are weaned from the milk. Go ahead. And drawn from the bread. Now you would read that. It says, weaned from the milk. And drawn from the breast, it's already been brought out that the breast is pointing to the law and to the prophets, or to the law and to the testimony. And it say, wean from the milk. Now, the milk is the principle of death, burial, resurrection, blood, water, and spirit. But you don't throw that away. You don't throw that away. You build upon it. Just like you got numbers. One, two, when you're in school. One, and you two, three, four, and then two plus two is four. Four plus four is eight. Then you get to bigger numbers. You so it just you you don't throw the numbers away. So, you know, just like when you're learning words, you like your name. I don't know if they do it anymore, but when I was in school, you had to do a cur you know cursive writing and penmanship, write your name over and over again, and then you learn uh, uh, little uh, symptoms like Sally, watch this, or Dick and Jane, and you know, and then and then you get to sentences. Dick and Jane went to the store. Then you start getting into paragraphs. Dick and Jane went to the store and they went and brought them some potato chips and some popcorn. You see what I'm saying? It's not like you're throwing the words away. You're just building on the simplicity. You're building on the principle. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, I've heard some people say, well, I, you know, I don't want to hear that anymore. I want to hear something else. You see what I'm saying? No, you ain't going to hear nothing else because the death Burial, resurrection, blood, water, spirit principle. That is Joshua's ID. He ain't going to throw his ID away. You see what I'm saying? But it's through the gift of the Holy Spirit that that principle is being built upon. And he's revealing things to us. Nothing different. It's the same foundation. It's not a different foundation. It's the same foundation. And he's building upon it. And he's revealing himself to us. And we're saying, it's like, to me, the way I look at it, it's like, it's like a big, huge puzzle. You know how you had a puzzle and it had 5,000 pieces or 1,000 pieces? And every time you put a piece in there, you can see the whole thing clearer. That's how it works for me. Like when he showed me something, and I'm like, oh, wow, now I can see it all better. Every time. It's not like you get to the point where I see it better now. It's good. Now I see the whole thing. Good. No. No. We're going to be learning in ages to come. 
Okay? Shoot. I'm telling you, man. Uh, okay. Go ahead. For precept must be a See? Precept. Now, what? Can you look up the definition of precept? See, because we're dealing with principles here. It says precept, so we got, we got a bloodline all the way across. Mm -hmm. So precept, the bloodline will be in the water line. Read, keep reading in, uh, there in the scripture. For precept must be upon precept. Mm -hmm. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. See, so you got the blood, the water, water, spirit. Precept upon precept. Go ahead. Line upon line. You got that bloodline coming all the way down. Go ahead. Line upon line. Line upon line. line. You got that water line coming all the way down. You got the spirit line coming all the way down. The blood, water, spirit. The death, burial, and resurrection all the way down. See, line upon line. Go ahead. Here little, see here a little in the law. And there, a little. and there a little in the prophets. You see what I'm saying? Now come on. Mankind, look, I ain't smart enough to know this, man. It's the Holy Spirit that's revealing these things. It says, a little he what say? Read that last part again. For precept must be upon mm -hmm. precept. Precept upon precept. Mm -hmm. Line upon line. Yep. Line upon line. Blood, water, spirit, baby. Death, burial, resurrection. Read. Here a, here a little in the law, and there a little, and there a little in the prophets. Read For, with stammering with lips. lips. Read and another time. So now I say stammering lips. You got blah 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 blah. See, water 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 water. See, spirit 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 spirit. Stammering lips. Repeat repeat. Stammering lips in another tongue. What tongue is that? This is a heavenly language. This is not a no man. This is not of no name. This is a heavenly language. That's that other tongue, see? Mm -hmm. And it's through the gift of the Holy Spirit that we are able to part partake of these things and we're able to share. We're sharing this lamb, just like they did back here before they came out. And we're about to come out, see? And they did this. They shared this lamb. That lamb had to be in them. And it's the same thing down here. The same thing, but it's spiritually so now. Okay, I asked for precept, because I heard the bill, right? Mm -hmm. This is precept from the Merriam-Webster Online Dictionary. Okay. A command or principle intended, especially as a general rule of action. Look at that. Ah, oh, man, I ain't got to explain that. That's self-explanatory. You see what I'm saying? A general rule of action. Uh, uh, you said something or principle. What was that you a said? A command or principle. A command or principle. See, that's what we're looking at here. It's not difficult. If you stick with it the way it's been given, you ain't going to go wrong because that's the way it's been set up. Death, burial, resurrection, blood, water, spirit. See, you can't go wrong because that's the way that it's been set up. That's how it's been given, and that's how he's going to teach you. Okay, go ahead. An order issued by legally constituted authority mm -hmm. to and we know Yahweh is authority he has all authority and power read to a subordinate official mm -hmm. well, we're subordinates we're, we're kings and priests but we're subordinate officials subordinates see he's he's all in all and, and one more thing look up line because it said precept precept and line upon line and I'm gonna take my seat because I'm telling you this gospel man it's a, it's a it's just a beautiful thing. Line a beautiful from Merriam-Webster Online Dictionary. Mm -hmm. A link or cord. Or a link or cord. Mm -hmm. And look up here how these, you know, this is all the way from beginning to end. You see how they link together? Right. You see what I'm saying? Come on, read. Or cord like materials such as comparatively strong, slender cord. Okay. Clothes line. Mm -hmm. A rope. See, something that is continuous, something that is going to be consistent. Used on a shipboard, mm -hmm. a device for catching fish. Uh-huh. And what Yahshua say, you're going to be fish as a man. Right. Okay. Oh, baby, ain't it something, John? Ain't it something? That's right. I'm telling you, this thing is really something, y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Woo. Go ahead. Any more? Consisting of a cord with hooks and other fishing gear. Hooks. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. I'm telling you, this gospel... You know, it's all been laid out for us. All we got to do is partake of the feast. We don't have to do any of the work. He's done it all. He mm -hmm. said the work is to believe on him who he has sent. Who has believed the report? And who is the arm of Yahweh revealed? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 
So I, I'm telling you guys, I'm just so thankful and grateful to be here. Mm -hmm. And I hope somebody got something out of that. And all praise and honor go to Yahshua, our Savior. I'd like to thank all the vessels that came forth tonight. Uh, that is our class for this evening session. I just have a couple of announcements and then we can remain after uh, for more announcements. We meet at the Best Western Plus Hotel, 4400 Frontage Road, Frontage Road in Hillside, Illinois, on Sundays from 12 to 2 p.m. and Mondays and Thursday nights. We are on Zoom and YouTube from 7:30 to 9:30 p.m. Twice a month. Our in-person uh, meetings on Thursdays, which will be announced on a month-to-month -month basis. But our next in-person meeting will not be on a Thursday. It will be on a Monday, which is April the 15th. We want to thank everyone for joining our class tonight and on YouTube. May we please stand for doxology, which is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all times now and ever. Let the class say hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah.